police raids are designed to catch suspects by surprise. Otherwise, their targets might run, destroy evidence, or decide to fight back. Usually a raid starts with a loud warning that cops are coming in no matter what. But other times, they're more sneaky, using stealth over muscle, creeping in quietly. It's hard to say which is more terrifying. We'll see both here. The targets of these raids this week were two outlaw motorcycle clubs, the Banditos, one of the largest outlaw biker clubs in the world, and the Comanchero, the largest in Australia. Police smashed down some bikers' doors in Australia's hot, dry interior, but they also used a key to sneak into an apartment on the country's sunny coast in an apparent no-knock search. In both cases, the raid seemed to come as a surprise. I mean, this guy was just chilling in bed with his dog. And this guy, he arrived just in time to be arrested. The mob reporter here with news of continued crackdowns on outlaw bikers down under, and why an old rivalry between two of the country's largest clubs still fuels these sweeping displays of police power. Let me tell you about it. The raids targeting the banditos took place far from the city centers and suburbs of Australia's major cities. which are the usual epicenters for much of the country's organized crime. It was some 400 miles west of Sydney and 300 miles north of Melbourne in the River Rainer region of Australia's interior. It's not far from where they're filming the next Mad Max movie. Now the original of that film is both a Nazi cinematic touchstone and a gritty organized crime classic. It presents a particularly dark view of the potential future for outlaw biker clubs. This probe targeted the Bandito's mid-state chapter. Two homes were searched on June 23, 2022. The police investigation has been underway since February, probing activities of the Bandito's in the Murrumbidgee district. Police said a detached shed behind one of the houses was being used as a Bandito's clubhouse, which they then dismantled. It couldn't have been very impressive, or police would surely have released photos of the inside. Instead, they show what was hauled out of it, which is lots of Bandito branded clothing. It looks like it may have been more of a warehouse than a clubhouse, perhaps a central facility for all of Australia's chapters, because I can see support wear here for at least 10 different Bandidos chapters, including Melbourne, Sydney, and Perth City, which is 2,000 miles away on the west coast. The presence of a clubhouse for one of the world's largest outlaw biker clubs seemed a surprise to many locals as well. The mayor where the clubhouse was raided said the bikies' presence had gone largely unnoticed, telling local media they had been of no real concern. Visually, at least, it looked like police raided a clothing store rather than a dangerous crime group, and on a local Facebook page, the comments on it were quite cutting. But of course, it wasn't just about the t-shirts and the hoodies. One of the men is accused of demanding $50,000 on behalf of the club with intent to steal, and he was refused bail. Charges against those arrested include participating in and contributing to a criminal group. Motorcycles, documents, knives, electronic devices, and storage devices were all seized for further examination. Four people were arrested, two men during the raids, and later the same day a man and a woman at the local police station. The Mid-State Chapter is the second oldest Bandito charter in Australia, after the club was imported from the United States, patching over a dissident chapter of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club in 1983. The Mid-State Chapter was briefly incorporated with the government as an organization until that was cancelled in 2014. The Banditos now claim to have more than 50 chapters in Australia.
A few days earlier, an alleged associate of one of the Bandidos outlaw biker rivals was charged. This was about 800 miles northeast on the coast in Brisbane. It was a small time bust, but the body cam footage seen here is interesting. It started with police monitoring activities of the Comancheros in the area, and that led to a traffic stop of a car with one man inside. This was back on June 7th. After the man climbed out of the car, officers pulled a designer zipped bag out of his jacket. Inside was alleged packed meth with a street value of about $70,000, police say. After further investigation, though, members of the Queensland Police's gang squad pulled off what looks like a no-knock search. There's no smashed door here. The cops clearly have a key to the apartment and quietly use it. The apartment entry happened about an hour's drive down the coast from where the car stop was, in Surfer's Paradise. Police seized a bunch of other illicit items and arrested the 31-year-old driver of the car from the traffic stop, who authorities say is a Comanchero associate. No guns were found during any of these raids. We've talked here before about the animosity between the Banditos and the Comanchero. The fight began in the hotel car park where members of the British Motorcycle Club had organized a party to celebrate Australia's Father's Day and had turned the normally quiet suburb into a battleground. It's still not clear how the fight began, but police say two rival motorcycle gangs arrived at the hotel and began fighting with rifles, shotguns, baseball bats and knives. It's foundational, in fact, to the evolution of policing and motorcycle club life in Australia. It helped lead to the country's stern crackdown on guns and biker clubs, above all else. One year after the new banditos burned their Comanchero colors and put the fat Mexican on their backs, there was a wild shootout between the two clubs, these former brothers, in a suburb of Sydney. It's called the Milpero Massacre now, Seven people died and 28 were injured in the raging gun battle at a motorcycle swap meet on Father's Day in 1984. The dead included four Comancheros, two banditos, and a young girl, an innocent bystander at the public event caught in the crossfire. This changed everything about how bikies, as they're called in Australia, were seen by the public, by politicians, and by police. The shocking events at Milpera and the innocent girl who was lost to it put these two recent busts in a different light for many in Australia. Sure, this is small time stuff, but so was the bike swap meet in Milpera. Some busts make bigger splashes than others. I'll leave it for you to decide how much damage these raids did and whether they were justified. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Turn on notifications by tapping the bell icon.